Hi, and welcome to Quilting with Lori. My name is Lori Dickman, and today we're going to be working on part number eight of our beginning quilting class series. And this is the quilt that we are working on right here. And we're going to be working on the Ohio Star Block today. So that's going to be fun. We're going to be working with some triangles. So let's see how this is done. So on the table here, you'll see that I have my pattern. Make sure that you download the pattern. The PDF is attached in the description box below, so make sure you download that and save it. There is also a pattern for the templates. This is a, a three and a half inch square. You really don't need that. You're just going to be cutting a three and a half inch square using your rulers. And this is the triangle template, template B, from which you're going to be making all of these triangles. Now today what I'm going to be sharing with you is how to use a ruler and if you happen to have this easy angle ruler, it's a great way to be able to cut these triangles very simply. And again, on my tabletop, you'll see the book. This is the book in which I'm keeping all of my PDFs. I have them all in um, plastic sleeves. I have the blocks that I've already created clipped to the front of this book so that I have everything all together. I recommend that you do that so you have everything in one place. These are the fabrics that I'm going to use from the fabric selection that I have. I'm going to use this focus fabric here. This three and a half inch square is going to be the center square right there. I am going to cut this three and a half inch with a fabric strip. So just take your light background or whatever color you're using for the light background and cut a four and a, uh, excuse me, a three and a half inch with the fabric strip. And then you're going to subcut this into four of the three and a half inch squares. They'll be the same measurement as that one. So I'm gonna get four of these, one of those. That's how we're gonna accomplish those squares. Now, for the triangle, um, what I did was I cut two and a half inch strips of fabric from the, um, in my case, I'm using a light pink and a dark pink. And on the pattern itself, they used um, a medium pink one and a medium pink two. You can use whatever colors you choose from your fabric stash, whatever you're, you plan to use for this quilt. And what you can do is one of two things. You can either take plastic uh, template film, as you've seen me use before, and just trace a nice um, template B with your plastic template film. Make sure that you include the quarter inch seam allowances. That's very important. You need those. And with that template, then you are going to simply trace on the wrong side of your two and a half inch strips of fabric. You'll trace and uh, let's see, how many do we need here? You're going to need a total of four of the medium pinks, four of the light backgrounds, and eight of the medium pink two fabrics. So you'll just simply trace those on the back of your fabric if you're using the uh, plastic template film. If you are using the easy angle ruler, let me show you how you're going to cut those. Before I show you the ruler, I'm going to show you with the plastic template film how you can um, trace this template B. And I'm using the edge of the film here from a previous cut. And I would recommend using a ruler when you're going along lines like this. But this is going to be my template B. Let me grab a paper scissors here. That's not what I want. I want this one. And I'm going to use a paper scissors to cut out this plastic. I don't want to use my fabric scissors on this. Okay, so there is template B. It's kind of hard to read this here. But there is my template B. And I've simply traced this, including the seam allowance. I used a template marking pencil. It writes on the plastic and it doesn't rub off on your hand or on your fabric, so I do like to use that. So if you plan to use a template plastic, I would fold your fabric um, double and on, on the inside, then you can simply trace this on here. And with every cut, then you're actually cutting out two of them. And then just keep flipping it. And you need a total of eight from the dark uh, pink fabric, and you need a total of four from the light background and four from the pink. 
So I'm going to go ahead and do that, but I'm going to do it with my ruler. So let me show you how that's done. All right, I've folded my fabric in half, so it's, it's on the fold. So with every cut, I'm getting two of these triangles. And again, this is a two and a half inch wide with the fabric strip. I am finding the two and a half inch line on the ruler and I'm lining it up on one edge of the fabric. This little black triangle right there is simply um, gonna go over the edge of the fabric. It helps to get rid of excess fabric that we don't need in our seam allowances. And you'll simply cut just like that. So we have two of them there. Then I'm going to flip this this direction and I think I'm going to need to move my camera a little bit here there we go so I flipped it lined it up again on the two and a half inch line and again this little dark piece of the triangle is coming off the edge down here and it's lined up beautifully there lined up there and there and this is off the edge and I'm simply going to cut that Oops. So now I have four of these created. And again, I'll just keep moving it down the line and flipping this ruler back and forth. Here are some more. Let's see if I can move my fabric so I don't have to move the camera. Again, lining it up on the two and a half and on the side. So now I have my eight triangles that I need from the dark fabric. So I'm starting again on the light pink fabric. And I believe I only need four of these. Lining up the two and a half inch line, the side here and the dark part of that triangle comes off the edge. So I have those four. Now what I'm going to do with this piece of fabric, I need four squares. This is a, a three and a half inch width of fabric strip and it's cut, up, it's folded on the fold here. So I'm going to cut um, a total of four squares from this that are three and a half inches. And then from the balance of this piece, I hope to be able to get, whoops, the rest of my triangles that I need. I need four light background triangles from this leftover piece of fabric. So let's see if I can accomplish that. Oh, I think I need to put in a new blade here. All right, so the first thing I want to do is cut this down to a two and a half inch wide strip of fabric. So there we go. And now, where's my ruler? Here it is, hiding over here. Let's see if I can get that. So I need two and a half inch strip right here. I'm lining it up on the, t on the line here, that two and a half inch line there. Uh, straight on the side here, this little black tip is coming off the edge. I'm gonna cut that off. And then what I'm going to do, let's move this up so I can get my ruler back down here. I am going to line this up again on the two and a half inch line on the side here. The tip, the black tip is off of the fabric and I had just enough. So now I have four light background triangles, four light triangles and eight dark triangles. And this is all from template B. And you can either create them using your uh, template and just tracing on the back of the fabric, or you can use your easy angle ruler. I also have four of the three and a half inch squares that are light background and one of the center square, which is a three and a half inch square. Now let's put the block together. All right, so I'm laying out the rows here. So in the corners, we have the three and a half inch light backgrounds. In the center, we have, I'm using my focus fabric for that three and a half inch square in the center. And then the quarter square triangles, um, I'm going, I've gone ahead and laid them out here just so that you can kind of see how we're putting this together. The light background square, or triangles, are gonna be 
facing the flat side, the long flat side is going to be on the outer side of each of these. And they're gonna be sewn with a dark triangle. And so let me lay these in here so you can kind of see how this all goes together. So this light with this dark one, we're gonna simply flip it over, match up this seam allowance, and we are gonna stitch, let me find something to show you with. We're gonna stitch a quarter of an inch seam allowance right there, and we'll bring it back and have it pressed to the dark, and that side of the unit will be sewn. Then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna sew this dark triangle to this one. We're gonna flip them right sides together so they match beautifully. And again, we're gonna sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance right there. And then we're gonna flip it back, pressing it to the dark. And then those two units are gonna be sewn together to create the quarter square unit. You're gonna do that four times until you have all four of these quarter square triangles put together. Remember, a half square triangle is with two different triangles. A quarter square triangle is with four different triangles that you're sewing together. And it's a real simple way to do it. You're just sewing each of these together, and then you're creating two bigger triangles that you sew together, which is simple, similar to what we did when we did the half square triangles for the previous blocks that we've worked on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these sewn and bring them back to the tabletop so that you can see that. Again, I'm taking a dark triangle, flipping it over. I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance here. I will start at this uh, 90 degree area here. Never start at a point. That is very difficult to start sewing at a point. Always start at a 90 degree angle there. So I'm gonna sew straight across there. I'm gonna flip this one right sides together and I'm gonna sew straight across here at a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then I'm gonna press to the dark. So I'll bring it back and I'll show you what it looks like. So I've just sewn these two units. I'm gonna separate them. I did it in a chain stitch fashion. I'm going to open them. I'm gonna press, finger press it to the dark. So there is that side and then on this one, again, I'm gonna finger press it to the dark flip it around and they will nest beautifully because the seam allowance is under the dark side in both cases. So I can go ahead and sew this together just like that. I'm going to nest these seam allowances so that they butt up just beautifully together there and we will sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way across. Now what I would recommend is that you put a leader in, just put a little piece of scrap, scrap fabric in your machine before you start sewing here. That way you can sew off the leader onto this point and you won't get hung up at the point. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew that. I'll bring it back to the table for you. In case you're not familiar with what I mean by a leader, I've just got a piece of little chunk of fabric here. I'm gonna put it under my um, press your foot there and start sewing till I get to the edge. Then I'm going to bring my unit up to that edge and get keep sewing here. There we go. I've sewn off the leader, that's called the leader, and onto the unit. And then I didn't get a jam at the beginning. Now you can also put an ender. So that was the leader. This could be the ender, if you will. And stick it here, sew onto it, and then you're ready for your next unit. It's ready to go. And so I have sewn this. I can finger press it. And then that, I'll take it to the iron and I will uh, press it and square it up to three and a half inches. All right, I've pieced together my quarter square triangles, and when I lay them in the block, I make sure that the light background is facing the outside of the block. That will help ensure that your block forms properly. You wanna make sure that everything is oriented correctly. And then you can simply sew it together by rows, and it shares that all with you there in the um, instructions. Row one, row two, row three. And then you just sew it all together and square it up to nine and a half inches. What I did with each of these is I did press open my last seam, which just helps with the bulk. You could actually press open all of those seams if you'd like to. You're certainly welcome to do that. 
That way everything will lay nice and flat. But those seams um, nestle beautifully. They just nest with one another and the points come out beautifully. Each of these squares is three and a half inches. Make sure everything squares up to three and a half inches. And then when you sew it together, press the seams and then square up the block. The block will be squared up to nine and a half inches and you are ready to go. Let me get it sewn and I'll show you what it looks like. You've seen me um, lay out my blocks and my quilts where I web it together and I'm gonna simply do that with this block. I've got everything laid out. I'm gonna take this top center block, lay it on top of this one, bring it up to my machine. I'm gonna start sewing on that, those two squares there. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is take these two right here, take the center one, place it on top of that and have it ready to go. As soon as I'm done with this unit here, I'm bringing that unit right up underneath. This is chain stitching. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is bring this one over here lay it on top. This is called webbing the block. All right, so those are all sewn. And if you take a look, we have this one. And I'm gonna finger press everything toward the quarter square triangle, I think. There we go. So that whole line is, it's webbed together by a thread. Now I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna take this top one, place it on top, the center um, unit there, bring it over here, start sewing. Matching everything out there. Then I'm gonna grab this second one here, bring it over, make sure that I've oriented everything correctly. And then the last one right here will come on top of this square, and here we go. So now I have webbed this block together. It's webbed with a thread down this row and down this row. Now I can finger press these or take it to the iron and press it, and then bring it back and sew this uh, top row to the second row and then this to the third row and my block is put together. The block is finished. It turned out just adorable. Um, it's I've squared it up to nine and a half inches. I did end up pressing the seam allowances toward the uh, plain squares. There was so much bulk in the, with the triangles that I just pressed everything toward these um, lighter squares and it worked out well, you can't see through it, so it's, it's gonna be just fine. Squared it up to nine and a half inches, it's ready to go, I will add it to my book. Um, so what we used this week was just these templates, these are your instructions, make sure that you get both of these downloaded and save those, print them out, put them in your book. If you have an easy angle ruler, you can use that to create these template bees. If not, simply use a template plastic and uh, copy that bee template and then trace it onto the back of your fabric strips to make um, the triangles that you'll need. I've taped it to my paper here so I don't lose this uh, template. And this is the marking pencil that I've used. I've had this for, my goodness, over 20 years. I got it for a dollar. Um, they, they do still have these. I Googled it and it's in Amazon and I'm sure you'll find them at your favorite quilt shop as well. So they're great items to have. So make sure you get these downloaded. I'll see you in a few weeks for the next block. And let's see, what are we doing next? It looks like we're going to be doing this wonderful sun here. Um, we're gonna be on, uh, let's see, week number. So week number nine is the sunshine block and you'll see those instructions in the video for that on December the 9th. I'll have that posted on Saturday, December the 9th. That one is gonna be a lot of fun. I can't wait to show you how to do that one. So we started out with some very simple blocks and we're just progressively getting to more difficult blocks, but really they're all easy. And you'll find that there is a more than one way to make any of these blocks that um, are part of the sampler quilt. I'm just showing you one specific way to make each of these blocks. But as you progress as a quilter, you'll find some speedier methods 
and some fun ways to create these blacks. Thanks so much for joining me for this week's Ohio Star Black and learning quarter square triangles. I hope you'll continue working on your sampler quilt. I'd love to see pictures of them. Make sure that you post them out on my Quilting with Lori Scrap Up Your Stash Facebook group page. I'll have links below. And I have links for many other types of quilts and projects that I'm working on. I've got many of that included in the description box below. Again, don't forget to print off your PDFs. And until next time, happy quilting.